here with Meg McLean, a good friend and uh, awesome activist in her own right. She's joining us from the Richmond, Virginia area. Uh, thanks for being with us, Meg. Thanks for having me on, Pete. Do you want to share a little bit about like a background, maybe a quick overview, so folks know a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, well, I um, was a liberal growing up as a kid, and I actually, once I tried to use the liberal, you know, system, I found out that it's it's not set up in the way that you would think, and it's actually much more detrimental to people than it is helpful. And, you know, the whole basis of liberalism is having a bleeding heart to want to help everybody. And I came to find that the ideas of liberty actually do that much better than the li liberal views that I once held. So I started getting into that, and then um, one of the things that I really focused on was, like, police corruption and police abuse of power, because... I found that that was the most immediate and most violent thing that was happening to innocent people around the world for, you know, various things. But in America, for anything from, you know, having a plant that people don't like to recording people who don't like being recorded and everything in between. So I uh, started doing some activism with that and then kind of found my niche uh, not so much in the political realm, but more the civil disobedience, non-cooperation realm. Because... That was, you know, I, I always use the EMT reference or uh, fire truck reference when people say that, like, oh, you're just out there, you know, narcissist trying to get attention. And I say, yeah, you know, yeah, we're trying to get attention. But when a fire truck goes down the street blaring its sirens and whatnot, it's not calling attention to itself to say, hey, check me out. I'm awesome. It's, you know, saying, hey, there's danger. You could get hurt. And that's, you know, basically what my activism is doing is just trying to yell out to people, hey, there's a problem out here and it's going to hurt you. So it's a good just, analogy. Yeah. So and you've yeah, you've been involved in activism in Keene. Uh, you've been arrested a part of uh, the crackdown at the, the TSA down in Florida. That was visiting you. <laughs> yeah. Vocally spoke out and stood up for your rights. And you were involved with even like something as trivial as reaching consensual interactions with people for uh, over limit aid sales. Yeah, uh, in D.C., dancing. It seems like I keep telling people all my activism lately is centered around children's activities, which is really <laughs> sad because there's still that fraction of the you know very status population who's been indoctrinated who think I deserve to sit in a jail cell for you know months or even years for those actions because you know I, I knew going into it that I was violating the law, so I should have known better and I should be punished, but. I don't think those people really understand what jail is. Right. So, you know, if they knew, they, they might not be so quick to say so. Yeah, and, and I would think that part of the reason why you're acting is for, you know, for the next generation, and, and as cliche as it is, for the children, you know. Yeah, I mean, people always say, think of the children, but then they just want to, you know, make restrictions on the children's lives as opposed to actually helping them. And, you know... With all the articles that you see lately, of especially like police arresting children at school for truancy or for, you know, just roughhousing like children do, everything under the sun, it's like people just accept it now. They accept a six-year-old being tased while in handcuffs, you know, that, that seems acceptable to them. And, you know, when people say, think of the children now, I'm always like, I got to slap you and tell you what that really means, don't I? <laughs> right on. Well, tell me about what do you have going on coming up? I know you and uh, Nate Cox recently announced a project. Yeah, well, um, Nate, he's an amazing guy, amazing activist down here, and he always uh, puts, you know, every effort and all his extra money and everything like that into his activism. But he does work a lot as well. But a couple weeks ago, he lost his full-time job. It's, you know, the, it's just horrible for veterans right now. They can't keep a job for the life of them. So... He decided that, you know, since he has proven himself, and, uh, you know, I think I've proven myself over the past few years as very active activist, very vocal activist, very, you know, outgoing activist. That and effective. If, I yeah. Say. If we can, um, we, we came up with this idea for this project that if we can get people to help fund it and maybe help us out for a month, we would be willing to do full time, you know, eight to ten hours a day, 40 hours plus a week of full-time activism within this area. And our d idea is to make these packets. It's like an educational information packet, uh, 10,000 of these packets, and go around Richmond everywhere from, you know, courthouses, especially targeting, you know, the very uh, police-targeted areas like, you know, lower-income areas, uh, urban housing, stuff like that. Um, 
we're going to reach out to these people with packets of information that we feel is right now the most immediate effective information that we can give people, which um, includes, of course, the idea of liberty, a pamphlet on just, you know, the whole what is liberty, what is the non-aggression principle, you know, it's, it's written in a way that's almost for children, you know, like mm -hmm. the, the language is so utterly simple that when you read it, you kind of think, you know, how did I not know this before it's it's almost stupid that I didn't know this and um, next thing that we're gonna tackle is the police accountability and knowing your rights because that is especially a big issue with um, like low-income people I've seen people's lives just ruined over stupid little things and uh, one of the main reasons that, that happens is people just don't know their rights and so, you know, nine times out of ten, it's a person gets caught doing something illegal just because they didn't know that they had the right to tell a cop that, no, you can't search my property or, you know, I, you know, not going to answer your questions. People don't understand those things. And so we want to educate them on that. And then um, we're also going to include information on jury nullification, which is another very immediate response of, you know, a jury can decide that, hey, this law is bad. It's not that this person did something bad. It's this law is wrong. So we're going to get rid of that. And then um, finally, we're also going to cover don't take a plea deal concept, which is, you know, the whole idea of everything from parking tickets to, you know, possession, anything like that. If everybody takes those full to court to trial, the system would not be able to handle that amount of caseload because right now I think it's like what 98 99 percent of people just pay their tickets to make it go away and they don't understand that that's how the system runs is it's relying on you to just go along to get along and if you don't do that if even just a fraction of people don't do that then it, they can't handle it and so they either have to stop writing all these tickets and arresting people for frivolous causes or they're gonna have to come up with a lot more money which means cracking down on more people, which means more people reacting. And so it's just, you know, all these concepts that we're going to include in this packet, they're very immediate, and they also have very immediate, you know, results. And so since we'll be targeting certain areas, it, it's going to have an effect instantly. You know, it's going to help these people instantly. It's not going to be, you know, sign some petition and maybe in a year we'll get a law change that, you know, they can just change back anytime they want and, you still got a million other things that are going to hurt you. These are things that right now can really, really help these people. Right on. It's what makes me really excited and think that y'all's uh, project, uh, the Liberty Empowerment Project, has a lot of potential because, uh, like you said, the pros that y'all are using, is it's very like clear, but at the same time it strikes the root and it kind of reminds me, it's reminiscent to me of like Thomas Paine's Common Sense back in the day, just this information very sort of at a, uh, a level that everyone can grasp and it, and it really just um, looks looks past all the, uh, I guess, the sugar-coated sort of status rhetoric and and tell and it reminds people that, hey, you have these rights and, and things like that. And um, like you said, it's immediate, so the, the uh, impact can be right away. Um, um, what is there, what, what website can folks go to to uh, find out more about this and this? Um, well, there's a few different ones we are mirroring on um, all three of these, but there's the virginiacoplock.org, which is the main site for the Virginia Coplock stuff. Who is NateCox.com? That's Nate's uh, personal blog, which he just started. And then my website, which is MegMcLean.com. Right on. Yeah, and I should mention, too, I mean, in addition to all your activism and outreach and stuff, you are an excellent uh graphic designer and videographer so I know you've had a hand in designing some of the layouts of the, the resources and I think that goes a long way. Um, yeah, all the flyers that we're going to be using for this, um, actually everything, uh, I all designed from either pamphlets that I had made before or input from other people and stuff like that so it, it's really exciting for me because you know I'm self-taught and then I sort of jumped into this I'm just gonna support myself instead of you know getting a job somewhere else and paying taxes I'm, I'm just gonna do this and now that I actually get to see my stuff printed and people are you know having it in their hands reading it it's impacting their lives that's just such a gratifying we're gonna um, we're, we're buying these plastic bags that kinda look like newspaper bags so that when we go around uh, like door to door knocking on people's doors if somebody's not there we can just hang it on their door handle 
So it's not like we're just going to be, you know, passing these out to people on the street that are going to instantly throw it in the trash without looking at it. It's like we're actually going to make the effort to go to people and not just hand it to them, but talk to them about it. Because, you know, there's simple things that you can talk to people about that you can't really cover in text. Like a common thing that police use is this tactic where, you know, if they want to search your car, they'll say something like, I'm going to have to ask to search your car. And people don't understand that the way they set that up, it makes it sound like, hey, you, you know, you have no choice in this matter. I have to search your car. But they still have to say, I'm going to have to ask to search your car. And if they ask, just say no. And so, you know, those kind of things you can't really explain in long paragraphs, all these different things. So we will be talking to people as well as handing out the information. And I think that's where this project goes even further. And especially, you know, compared to political campaigns, like I said, if you want to go around and have a petition sign, maybe get a law changed, maybe get your guy in. It'll change in a year or, you know, there's a million other things that are wrong. So, you know, that maybe getting one thing changed just really isn't that kind of effort and money to us. And this is, you know, for the price, which is very low, it's going to reach a lot of people. Right on, especially with you and Nate. Again, both very accomplished activists, good people and uh, great communicators. Um, I, I'm excited to see this hit the ground and, uh, you know, it could be something that gets replicated elsewhere based on the model you guys create. Mm. So like, to me, it's a great, it's just an example of sharing ideas one mind at a time. And I think, you know, you guys are advocating some ideas that really resonate with folks and, yeah. and I mean, like the way that we're going about it too, is, uh, we're asking for like all the printing fees and everything like that. That's our main cost for, this project, it, we're not, you know, trying to make money off of it or anything like that. We're just trying to cover our costs. So all those are covered through our ad sales, which means that anybody who buys an ad, even though those ads are only 50 or 100 bucks, you're guaranteed to have that printed on 10,000, you know, copies of it, handed out carefully to 10,000 different people. And so, you know, you're guaranteed that exposure. And it seems like a lot more than you would get in other places. And we're still offering it at that low price just because we're not trying to make money off this. We're just trying to share knowledge. We feel that right. if we target especially these areas that we've been looking at that like are the places where police go and target people just for, you know, they'll be jaywalking. And so they'll stop them and try and pull up and see if they have warrants out or anything like that. Like these people get that a lot. And so if they had that kind of information and that knowledge to protect themselves, suddenly, you know, that is going to be a big impact in that area. Whereas everyone else, you know, you can post stuff online as much as you want. You can stand on a street corner and pass out a handful of things as much as you want, but it's, it's not really going to make that dent. And that's what we hope to do with this project. Right on. Well, Meg, I wish you and Nate and the Liberty Empowerment Project, uh, much success. I think taking the ideas of the streets and actually acting on these ideas really is going to have a big impact. I'm pretty sure that myself and Meg, respectively, have have uh, proved ourselves through our activism and outreach over the last couple of years. And we're hoping to get your support for this next project. So support us if you can, or if you can't, find somebody else who can, because uh, we need to spread liberty in this area.